The Mutual Audio Network, where relaxation and imagination blend. Listen responsibly. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Audio drama in the age of Arthur. TheTableRound.com For word had gone through all the land that he who drew the blade should fill the sovereign's empty throne, the rightful king, be made. The Immortal Legends of the Table Round Chapter 1 The First War that Arthur Had and How He Won the Field The death of Uther Pendragon left Britain without a king. For years chaos gripped the land until a mere boy pulled a sword from a stone. Now young Arthur, the newly crowned High King, faces his first challenge as an alliance of kings from the north rebel against his reign and engage him on the field of Bédigrain. Where is Arthur? Where is this boy king? I want to see that sword he pulled out of the stone, so I can shove it up his- He's just past that copse of trees, my lord Lot. He has the Blessed Virgin on his shield, doesn't he? Yes, but you can't see it any longer. His shield is caked in blood. You can know him by his dragon helm. Dragon helm? He thinks he's another Uther Pendragon, does he? I wouldn't know, your highness, but he has killed close to thirty men. How? How could a bloody scullion cause such carnage? He's barely a squire. Well, he was fighting on horseback. But when he was on horse, that's when he drew the sword. It lit up like dawn, and suddenly nothing could stop him, like he had legions of angels on his side. Witchcraft and holy relics may make a fine show, but we still outnumber him five to one, and he still just... How about you? Back! Get back! For Arthur Damn you. and the Britons. Back. Uh. Uh. Your king is still just a boy, and I, Lot of Orkney, am not going to let him grow into a man. Uh. You're a fool, Lot. Arthur, Arthur is the true king. Ordained by gods, old and new. Oh, shut up. There he is. Oh, I've wanted to chop that stupid blonde head off his shoulder since the first time I saw him. This is the bloody Merlin's doing. He brought them here with his magic. On the back of some great turtle or through some secret fairy tunnel. Damn that man. Curse him and his devilry. What do we do, sire? Fall back. You run and give word to Nintrace and the king with a hundred knights. Tell them to regroup their cavalry at the hillock. I have a king to kill. It's too dangerous. He's right there. This won't take a minute. Fang's knights will encircle you before you can reach him. Look at me, Arthur! Look at me! I am going to use your skull as a goblet! My lord, we need to flee. Ah! This isn't over, Scullion King! Well, that's one day down. How would you say we did, Merlin? 
Well, Arthur, let me see. Two arms, two legs, one head still, for what that's worth. I'd say you could have done worse. Not too bad, I suppose, with that many kings trying to kill me. King Lot, King Caradoc, Nentrace, the king with a hundred knights. Do you suppose he'll have to change his name now? Mm, what? Who? Who? What? The king with a hundred knights. I mean, we had to have killed some of them today. Will he be the king with 68 knights from now on? Or do you suppose he has more just waiting to fill the ranks? Let's exercise your wit in something other than being droll. How did you find your first battle? Well, I'll admit to you I was frightened. If you hadn't been, I'd have worried more about you than I already do. What else? I didn't take out the sword from the stone until I was in a dire moment, just like you told me. Yeah. Then, I killed an awful lot of people. Some, some were knights, most weren't. Just foot soldiers. In leather, not steel. Holding spears. It was more like they just got in the way. I wish I hadn't had to. Think on that, Art. Merlin, now where are you off to? We return from the field of victory. King Ban! Because of you, we won the day! I've seen seasoned knights with a lifetime of battle experience who couldn't have matched you today. And your nephew, Sir Bors. Oh, still out there, chasing gales around. He might be at it all night. There aren't too many left. Most of them have regrouped back to the hills. Come here, boy. Oh, I missed you too. Who let a horse in the tent? Oh, he doesn't mean that, Caval. That is the biggest, ugliest hound I've ever set eyes on. Don't listen to the bad man, Caval. You're a fine dog. A good dog. Yes, you are. You suppose they could make armor for him so he could join me in battle? What do you feed this beast? <laughs> well, growing up I usually shared my food with him. Which is probably why you're so scrawny. We're gonna take some money, your bloody massive beast. Go get it! <laughs> Sorry, Arthur, but it's a damned ugly dog. What word from the field, Sir Kay? Kings Nentris and Pelinor are formed tight together, and Lot is on the North Hillocks with the King of 100 Knights. 68. Huh? Nothing. Go on. We did a good job routing them today, especially thanks to King Ban's timely arrival at sunset. Someday, my lord, you'll have to tell me how you managed that. Perhaps someday. Problem is, these stinking northerners have come so far, it's hard to scare them off. Even if they fled the battlefield, they don't have anywhere to go but regroup and attack again tomorrow. And how many footmen do we have? Just under 6,000. And how many do Lot and Pelinor and all have? We think still around 20,000. That's not good. No. And their footmen are armed like ours. No armor, spears, and a few axes? I suppose so, yes. So, there's not much of a chance they could harm a fully armored knight on horseback. They'd really be no threat. But there's no point in charging into an army of serfs. We know their lines will break. That's why we send our footmen to attack them. Yes! Footmen killing footmen, while we ride by in our impenetrable steel skins. So why deploy our footmen at all? Why not just ride into the mass with all our knights? And spend the day slaughtering peasants? I don't see the game. <laughs> They'd have to scurry off to avoid being trampled. Yes! I mean, no. I mean, why kill the footmen if we can just ride right through them? I mean, there are bound to be a few that get killed, but if they can't stop us from trotting right up and attacking Lot and his knights, why bother with them at all? We'll be surrounded, knights ahead, and the gallowglass footmen behind us. But will that matter if we win? If we take Lot and his men by surprise, will his conscripts really ride up and try to rescue them against fully armed mounted knights? Wait, he might just be onto something. Go on. And if our footmen attack after we cut through, then Lot's 20,000 will feel like they are the ones surrounded. I don't know. It seems dishonest somehow. <laughs> I think I like this plan. King Ban, when will the rest of your forces arrive? In several hours. Enough time for breakfast before the battle. That's another thing. Why are we waiting till mid-morning to fight? It's the way these things are done. Come on, Arthur. Don't make me fight on an empty stomach. Just imagine this with me. We charge with our knights as soon as King Barnes' host arrives. 
We can't take the rebels totally by surprise just because we'll have to work our way through the footmen, but at least they'll all be off their game, running around to get armed and mounted. The confusion should help make up for our lesser numbers. As we clash with the knights, our footmen attack their footmen. I'm willing to bet their footmen break and scatter, and the kings will be too busy with us to regroup their men. It's quite a trick, but it can only work once, if at all. We only need it to work once. If we don't win tomorrow, we'll never have a chance to need another trick. Then we do it. Lot and the rest are going to have a miserable morning ere dawn breaks. And we're either going to die swiftly, or have one hell of a victory. So, Merlin, where do we go from here? Chase Lot back to Orkney? Besiege Caradoc, or the king with, I imagine, a good deal less than a hundred knights? Reward your friends, my king. Gift them all the treasures of the battlefield. Saddles and swords and jewels never before have so few, fought so bravely and gained so much. Richly reward King Ban and his knights. Revel in your friendship. You mean we should just give up? But Lot's getting away. Let it go, Art. More slaughter would only anger God. Look out at those men across the battlefield. They need to get home. Sow their crops. Their fields are your fields. You are the king. And these rebel barons will not trouble you for some time. They do not yet know it, but an army of Saxons has landed on the northern shore of Lothian. Even now, cities are being sacked and burned. These rebels will have more than enough to keep them busy to trouble you for several years. So, does this mean we've won? Don't sound so proud. This is only the first of your twelve great battles. I'm going to have twelve battles? Will I win any more? Well, you'll have more than just twelve. But the great twelve are what Nennius counts. Ah, Nennius, of course. Indeed. Who's Nennius? What? Nennius. Who is he? Nennius? You! You just said. Aren't you full of questions? You've always taught that it's good to question things. Oh, so now you listen to me. Bah. I must be off. I ride to Umbria to go see my old teacher, Blaze, and tell him of the day's events for his great chronicle. You won't stay for the celebration? Oh, Art. The victory celebrations are for the young to commemorate their courage and their faith. Old men like me only remember what has been lost. I will be back with you soon. <laughs> Safe travels, old friend. What, what are you up to? Is this something terribly mysterious, I suppose? Something like that. Bedivere! Fine job today! Brastius, Ulfius, nothing could stand against your might. Sir Lucan, open more wine barrels! My men are parched! It sure takes a lot of food to feed these soldiers. That's practically the hardest part of war. I saw a horse fall on you today, and you're really still going to say that? Fighting's easy. You just keep fighting until you win, or someone kills you. Figuring out supply lines is the real challenge. My goodness. Who is that woman who just walked in? Her? That's Queen Anna Mugaus. King Lot's wife. Uther Pendragon's daughter? Aye. She's striking. I suppose... What's she doing here? Who knows? And that huge fellow behind her? Her bodyguard? 
Well, that's his son, Gawain. He's 14. My God, he's bigger than me. Well, that's not saying much. They breed them big up in Orkney. From what I hear, they probably eat the smaller ones. Make yourself scarce. She's coming this way and you'll offend her. With my manners? That and your foul stench. Now go. Your Highness. Queen Anna Morgaus, we are honored by your presence and a bit surprised. I often find that while the men are busy bashing each other with swords, it's a good idea for a woman to try and communicate in a more civilized manner. Well, it can't hurt. Please, have a seat. This rebellion is so unfortunate. My husband feels, felt, that by virtue of marrying the Pendragon's daughter, the High Kingship was his by right, almost as a dowry. Understand, in the years since my father's death, King Lot has wielded considerable influence with the other kings. It's not all bluster that pushed him towards insurrection. It was not based on any enmity towards your royal person. It would have been better to have this talk before we spent the last two days making Britons kill Britons. You're right, of course. But now that he has fled the field, what are your intentions towards my husband, provided he no longer raises his sword against you? Well, Lot was one of Uther's most trusted war chiefs. He could be mine if he wishes. It's better to build the future than avenge the past. I think that could be agreed upon. He thinks quite highly of you. Does he? How could he not? Last I saw him, he said he'd use my skull as a drinking cup. A waste of a perfectly lovely skull. Um, thank you? I would love nothing more than to secure the friendship of the High King for Orkney. Tell Lot that we have quarreled, but I have no desire for it to continue. He can keep Orkney and Lothian as long as he returns to his lands now and agrees to enforce the king's peace. Have you met my son, Gawain? I haven't had the pleasure. He's a well-mannered boy and trained in all the knightly arts. Already he can hold his own with many an elder knight. That, I believe. It would strengthen the bonds between us if you would do us the honor to keep Gawain as your squire. It would be an honor. He looks a fine, strong lad. He is well on his way to being the finest jouster in the north, if he can forgive a mother's pride. It would be hard not to forgive you of anything. Noble King Arthur. You are truly as gracious and courteous as they say you are. This has been most... pleasurable. Perhaps I can see more of you... in the future? Good night. Good night, then. Hello, Kay. I just made peace with Orkney. Did you now? Yes, I did. And Queen Anna Morgaus left her son with us to be my squire. Hostage. Squire. Yeah, but she means hostage. That's how politics work. You never say what you mean. But she's giving you her oldest son in a show of good faith. Oh. Well, that's good too. So when do we build ourselves a nice new comfortable capital? We have to pacify the kingdom first, and deal with the Saxons. And the Jutes, and the Geats. I suppose. And the Picts, and probably the Irish. Drink up, Kay. You too, while we can. Ahem. <coughs> My laird. Hello. You're the Queen's handmaiden, aren't you? What can I do for you? My Lady Queen Anna Magaus asked if she might have a word with you. Of course. Kay. Tell someone to fetch us another chair. I'm sorry, my lord. I mean that my lady would like to see you. Privately. Privately. Alone? <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Kay? Watch my dog. <laughs> this is her pavilion, my lord. Thank you. 
My king, I've been mulling some wine. Please come in. You certainly have a lot of cushions. I know. Here, have some wine. It has a special blend of spices. My sister taught it to me. Cloves, rose petals, Damascus sugar, and other secret ingredients. Oh, that is good. Leave us. My lady. Close the tent and have a seat, Arthur. Let us try and shake off the night's chill together. Father, welcome back. Kay, where is the king? Arthur retired for the night. Hurry to his pavilion and fetch him. Um, he's not in his pavilion, father. Son, are you trying to tell me this is a matter of some delicacy? Yes, father. We both know you have no delicacy. Now hurry before I cuff your ears. Yes, dad. Sir Hector, have all the scouting parties come back? My lord, Sir Sagramore is well returned from hounding the king with one hundred knights. It seems the last of our foes have fled, all save Ryan's, King of North Wales, who even now wages war against your ally, Leodegrance, King of Cameliard. Well, what's all this about? Well, Kay, Rion's is a hateful knave, and Leodegrance had been our staunchest friend since before I drew the sword. And of our fathers, before I was ever called king. Your surcoat is on inside out. How did Sagramore say the battle was going? Leodegrance is imprisoned in his castle, beset all sides by savage men that cease not from the siege. The king is lost if aid comes not swiftly. And what say you, lords? We are all exhausted, but Leodegrance is in peril. Shall we ride? Wait until tomorrow. We cannot fight with bodies that cry out for mercy. March at dawn. Leodegrance must hold a little longer. My king... My son, grant me this, I ask. March for Cameliard tonight, this very hour. Even now, Ryan's is assailing the walls of your oldest ally, my oldest ally. Let the good King Arthur give no heed to cautious counsel. Be bold and righteous in this. Dear Foster Father, your love and loyalty do you credit, and I'd be a fool not to heed you on this. Oh, Arthur, why do you hate breakfast so much? It'll do you good, brother. Let it never be said we did not stand by our friends. Gulp those goblets down, men, and sound the horns. There'll be no sleep for us. We ride to Camilla. Hello, this is Blair Pomberley, and I played Merlin. The earliest source of material on the person of King Arthur is the Historia Britonum, written by the monk Nennius sometime in the early 9th century. In this massive text, Nennius lists the twelve great battles won by Arthur, who was not yet identified as the king, but called the War Leader, or the Dux Bellorum of Britain. What modern sites correlate with the twelve battle sites named in the Historia Britonum is still a matter of some debate. Written by Morgan Z. Sowell. Featuring Chandler Walpole as King Arthur, Thomas McCutcheon as Kay, and Blair Parmalee as Merlin the Magician. King Ban of Benwick was played by Wesley Ganey. Anna Morgos was played by Olivia Steele, Sir Ector was David Kendall, and King Lot of Orkney was Greg Clancy. In the next chapter of the Immortal Tales of the Table Round, young King Arthur rushes to the aid of his ally, Leodegrance, who is besieged by the wicked King Ryons. And there, Arthur first sets eyes on Leodegrance's only daughter, a young damosel named Guinevere. Mutual of Audio's Sonic Kingdom, presented to you by the Mutual Audio Network, the network where we can all listen and imagine. 
together. Hi, I'm Perky Marlins, and welcome back to Mutual of Audio's Sonic Kingdom. Last week, we traveled to the wilds of Audio Island, which is in the western edge of that place some call the Bermuda Triangle. We went there to check on the progress of an audio drama producer who we have re-educated into the aspects of surviving in the wilds of the audio podverse. This wild creature, who Jim has named Bobo, has been used by society as a data entry clerk, a bartender, a project manager, an exotic dancer, and a biomedical research subject. The Mutual Audio Network's re-education project gives our young friend an opportunity for a productive life, in Bobo's natural environment, as an audio drama or comedy producer. The rehabilitation of this magnificent wild and creative animal includes a chance to reach a wider range of distribution and the extra exposure that brings, along with free production resources and the potential to make some money. Bobo has been hard at work on a first masterpiece, and right now, we can see Jim giving Bobo some feedback on the final mix. <laughs> That's pretty good, Bobo. I'm just not sure about the choice of background music. It seems to be a bit too... <laughs> no! No, I'm sorry, Bobo! No, don't, don't, don't hurt me, Bobo! No! <laughs> Artists. Sometimes they can get a bit touchy. Well, Jim knew the job was dangerous when he took it. Join us next week as Mutual of Audio's Sonic Kingdom will visit a pack of voice actors living in the hidden valleys of darkest Nova Scotia. For more information about the Mutual Audio Network, go to mutualaudionetwork.com or inquire at mutualaudio at gmail.com. The Mutual Audio Network, listening and imagining together.